you, Sister. Um, I'm Ann Scheidler with the Pro-Life Action League, and uh, we are so appreciative that Resurrection is so enthusiastic about working with us to help women who change their minds at the last minute. Our role as the Pro-Life Action League is that, that we train sidewalk counselors who go out to the abortion clinics and offer alternatives to the women. When one of our sidewalk counselors is successful in um, uh, getting a woman to choose life, we refer her to the Women's Center. And the Women's Center is a crisis pregnancy center that offers all sorts of resources and counseling and referrals to doctors and follow through to help the women, uh, you know, in supporting them in their choice of life. But sometimes they need services that are beyond what is possible for them to do on site. And Resurrection Hospital is the closest hospital and clearly the one that would be um, most cooperative with us because of their Catholic mission and reverence for life. So following our, our meeting um, of about three weeks ago, we invited uh, a couple of doctors who have experience in this realm. You're going to hear first from Dr. Tony Levitino, who comes to us from Las Cruces, New Mexico, by way of Minneapolis early, early this morning. Um, Dr. Levitino was in practice in upstate New York for many years, and he did abortions as part of his practice. And through a, a personal tragedy, he came to, to confront the fact that he was taking the lives of other people's children. And he now works tirelessly to to tell people the value of life. Thank you, Ann, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, as Ann mentioned, uh, in years past, I was an abortionist. I did first and second trimester abortions in the, uh, between 1980 and 1985, I performed 1,200 abortions, including 100 second trimester abortions, up to 23 weeks of gestation. Um, laminaria is the key to increasing the safety of second trimester abortions and actually late first trimester abortions as well. Uh, I apologize, I meant to bring some. I actually had some in my office and I was running around the last two days and forgot to grab a hold of it. The laminaria, area, as most of you realize, is uh, basically it's just a small cigar-shaped device. It's about that long, it's very thin, uh, and it's actually tightly wound sterilized seaweed made in Japan. And these are used as a hydroponic dilator. The uh, laminaria tents, as they're called, I'm not sure why they have the name tents, uh, but these laminaria tents are placed in the cervix in preparation for an abortion. Uh, but if you're going to go beyond 10 weeks, uh, certainly up to, you know, and first trimester DNC can easily be done up to approximately 13 weeks from last period. And you're really going to, I mean, you can forcefully dilate the cervix to that point, but it becomes increasingly difficult, and we're talking about greater and greater trauma to the cervix. So along came laminaria. These laminaria tents are inserted in the cervix. For a first trimester abortion, I would typically do it the night before. Um, you can easily, normally fit one or two or sometimes even three of these things inside the cervix. And what they will do is absorb water slowly over the next eight to 12 hours and dilate quite considerably. As I said, these are very thin, maybe a millimeter in diameter when they start. And when, when these things have absorbed water, when you remove them, they're typically thicker than a cigarette. They're usually three, four, five, six millimeters across, and that slow process dilates the cervix. When you get into second trimester abortions, then the need for a laminaria is even greater. Uh, the cervix has to be progressively dilated to greater and greater diameters to be able to accomplish the procedure. And we would typically do multiple laminaria insertions uh, for an early d &E abortion, 14 to say 18 weeks, I would typically do at least two insertions eight hours apart. So I bring patients in two days ahead, do the first laminaria insertion, as many as I could get in, typically two or three at first, bring them in the next morning, remove the laminaria, reinsert more laminaria, as many as I could get in, five, six, seven sometimes. And these would progressively dilate the cervix. Two and sometimes three applications of the laminaria would get to a point where you've pretty sufficiently dilated the cervix and don't even need the metal dilators any longer. And that, as I said, increases the safety of the procedure. We always hear about abortion being a choice. Yes, women make choices. Of course, we all make choices in our lives. and um, Some of them are good and some of them are bad, and abortion is a perfectly good example of that. But a lot of women who choose abortion subsequently choose not to abort. 
Uh, in most situations, uh, if she's involved in a chemical abortion with RU486, once those pills are taken, there's pretty much no return on that one. Uh, and of course, with the suction BNC, the procedure is pretty self-contained. Uh, it's going to take about 15 minutes, and again, it's all going to be over. But when laminary is involved, and that's in a lot of abortions, 10% uh, of all abortions in this country are second trimester or later. And almost, and virtually all of them are going to involve the use of laminary. And you're going to have at least 24 hours between the time this procedure is initiated with the laminaria and the actual DNC procedure is, or DNE &E procedure is performed. Sometimes longer. And many of these women are going to change their mind. I certainly <laughs> ran into them in my practice. Laminaria, as I said, laminaria removal is, is usually very simple. We're asked to hold the strings of the laminaria themselves. You have a speculum. You can see the cervix. You can see the laminaria. Grasp hold of either the strings or the laminaria itself, usually with a ring forceps, gently and steadily extract them, and the job is done. Um, as I said, I would put them on antibiotics. Uh, you want something obviously safe in pregnancy, so I would probably pick Cipro and Flagyl for five to seven days, um, and then just have them uh, rest for the next day or two, allow the cervix to come down. And other than that, the patient doesn't have to be restricted in terms of activity. One more thing. Um, so once the laminaria on how dilated it is. Uh, these studies quote up to a week. Um, these were widely dilated cervixes, and I said several centimeters. Uh, but they will, they will return. They will return over time. There's no set time. It depends on how far it's dilated already. So you said no real change to her activity? I would, I would, as I said, I would put her on antibiotics, um, you know, ampicillin plus flagell, cephalosporin plus flagell. Uh, for seven days, I would suggest that I would suggest bed rest for 48 hours. Um, you know, as I said, just to, to feel that I've done everything I can. No heavy lifting. Again, for 48 hours at least. There are no set guidelines, but that they just seem like common sense precautions. Clearly, the lady is conflicted. Um, she is um, very likely being. She is feeling pressured. Most women who are undergoing abortions are under tremendous, tremendous pressure. There's lots of reasons why people seek an abortion as, as an alternative. Um, they're concerned about their family's opinion. They're worried about their future economic well-being. I mean, you, you know the list. It's very, very long that, that women feel pressured into an abortion. If she's changed her mind, that tells me that she's either rethought it or she may be, you know, she may be feeling pressured in the other direction. So clearly, counseling and support are really important to this young lady uh, because obviously she's, I can't even, I, I mean, as, as a male, gynecologist or not, I can't even imagine the psychological pressures of her going back and forth with this kind of decision. I think it's fairly common. I think it's more common than people realize, even in women who go through the procedures. Um, a lot of women may, may feel strongly that an abortion was the right choice at the time they made it, but there are certainly many, many women out there who regret their abortion choice after it's occurred. Um, this is, this is, I think this illustrates that point more than anything else. That many people, I'm sure, go through these conflicts, and probably far more than we even realize. They need, they need counseling, they need psychological support, because clearly there's, there's a war going on in her head about this procedure and, and what she's thinking of doing. 